Hey guys, it's Chad from Dirt4 TV. Uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to do a little maintenance on the clutch. Um, I was in there at 25 hours and retorqued the drive bolt uh, down. That's what they recommended. So now we're catching up to around 900 miles. I don't know exactly how many hours are on it, but I know we're over 100. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to do some maintenance, like I said get the cover taken off, clean everything, inspect it, make sure the belt looks good. Um, if this is your first time watching, you know, please, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button and the bell so you can be notified every time we put out a new video. And if you already are subscribed to our channel, hey, thanks a lot. We appreciate it. It really helps us out. So let me get this thing ready to go, and I'll be back. Hey, YouTube. I've done a little bit of work since you've been gone. Um, what I did, jacked it up. I have jack stands underneath it. Um, I still have the jack under there supporting it. I've taken off the nut on the back of this bolt for the shock. I've loosened every one but one screw on the cover. And I've loosened this band clamp with a regular screwdriver. So what we'll do is we'll get this shock out of the way first. Take off this hose here and then one more screw. Pull it out, see what we got going on here. This here, I'll just fold up. I'll get a little cord for that. Last screw out here. That well, doesn't look too bad. Looks like I am getting a little bit of over travel. So what we're going to do is we're going to pull the belt off, I'll get the tool for that, and we will get that belt out of there. Okay so guys you have this tool that is a spanner wrench for your shock, the other end is the wrench that goes in here, you put it in there and then you push that puck back and it spreads out the sheaves so you're able to get the belt off. Okay, so once you got that off, the back, which is your secondary, you get it right off the front.
doesn't look bad, but I'm having some jerky starts. I can see right here is a little bit of a burn. Doesn't look bad, doesn't look like it's been uh, where my secondary is, no, it'd be my primary, where the primary opens up too far to where it will eat into these teeth. I don't see any of that, but I have one spot right there that's worn. Hey, it's not bad. We're going to clean these up, primary and secondary, and then I'll clean this belt and we'll reuse it again. Well guys, since I'm all the way in here, and I did notice some over travel up here too on the top to where the belt is hitting on the top and we're having some belt issues of it hitting on the bottom. Now Todd at Hunter Works, he makes a spacer that goes in here between your spring. I don't know what's in here now. Usually it's one blue spacer. You can buy another blue spacer from Polaris and put it in there and then that will help with some of this over travel because um, it won't allow the belt to go down so far. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the secondary off. We're going to change out the square pucks to the round pucks from Hunter Works. And then I'm going to get a hold of Todd, talk to him from Hunter Works about the spacer. I'm probably going to go to the standard white washer uh, spacer in here. So basically I'm going to pull these two off. Okay, so I broke these two loose with impact. This was 15 millimeter. Uh, this was 21 millimeter. Wasn't bad. Um, this secondary should just slide off. The primary, I'll need a pulling a puller for it, which I do have. See, I have one washer, one collared spacer washer. Okay, so I got my polar, threaded it in there. Um, I did put a little bit of grease on the threads. This could either be really easy or be really hard. I'm hoping it's really easy. Um, I've had problems in the past. We have a video out there of a, some major issues we had on a 2017 Can-Am XRS um, so let's just see how it goes here put it in forward Get a hammer and give it a whack. Doesn't seem to have any damage. So far, everything worked pretty good. Um, you know, if I was going to clean this up, it'd be no problem. Uh, it's in pretty good shape right now. Uh, then we'll go over the cleaning them on the bench, and then back to the installation. Hey guys, it's Chad from Dirtport TV. Um, I'm just finally getting back to you. It's been roughly three or four days since I started the first video that we were talking about just doing some maintenance on the clutches, basically just cleaning them, uh, inspecting them. While I was in there, I found a few items that needed to be addressed. One are the pucks on the secondary. These are the square pucks. 
and I am getting a little bit of wear. Don't know if you can see that or not, but it's getting some wear in here on the drive side on both of them. So I went and got a hold of Todd at Hunter Works and we're going to install the round rollers in here and then also on the primary we're going to install the standard white washer. That will be a whole nother video. I, what I'm going to do now is just finish up the general maintenance, cleaning, inspection. I'm going to temporarily throw everything back together and wrap it up and then when I'm done uh, with that I'll pull everything back apart. I'll make a new video on how to install the round rollers and how to install the white washer on the primary. So let's get this going. First off you can wash this outer clutch cover with soap and water. Um, I just have some rags handy here so a little spray of brake clean and the inside was not bad at all. Um, I was very impressed. I thought I would have had some issues in there. Um, maybe some more dirt or belt dust, but really there's hardly anything. Once I wipe this down, I will show you on how much was in there. Make sure you inspect your seal that's on the other part which that is mounted to your motor and to your transmission. Just inspect that seal. Make sure it's good, not broken. So here's my clean clutch cover. And literally, that's all I've got out of there for brake dust. Sorry, not brake dust. Belt dust. So that is done. I'll show the cover. I'll show the cover that's mounted to the motor and tranny. I'll show cleaning it once I move the camera and get set up over there. But basically, here, what you want to do is you want to inspect this. Make sure you don't have any wear marks on here on your secondary. And like I said, when I did my inspection, I had a lot of wear marks from the pucks. These are notorious for doing this. Something you should do when you get it brand new. Change these pucks out. Change them to the round rollers. So basically it's going to be the same thing. I'll give her a bit of a spray on the non-movable side. Wipe those up. Nice and clean. I'm going to take a Scotch bonnet pad. We're going to do basically the same thing. Give a little spray. We're going to go in there with that Scotch bright pad and try to clean off any residue, belt residue, and really scuff these sheaves. other side come back in there with the rag Now, I'm basically going to have all this apart when I do put the round rollers in. Um, I really should do it then, but I'm going to do it now uh, because I want you guys to see that you could have left this on the vehicle and done it. 
I took them off once I seen they needed the pucks replaced and I wanted to go with the white washer I knew it would be easier with it being off I'm gonna get a little air gun I see Finish wiping this one last time. Secondary is clean. Now I don't know if you can see in there. Let it focus. But with that scotch right, it kind of cross hatched these sheaths and it cleaned everything off of there which there wasn't really much but cleaned it up pretty good so secondary's done the primary right here if you leave this on the machine, you can do it on the machine. On the machine, it's going to be facing like that with the motor this way. This is your movable sheath. Um, what you can do is remove these six bolts on there. They are under spring tension. You can just push on it and pull these six screws off. Take everything off, take your spring out, and then you can clean in here a little bit better. Blow it out, clean it. Um, it'll work really well on the machine. Like I said, I just have it off because I'm going to be replacing some parts in here. You do not have to have a clutch tool to do this, but uh, since I'm going to be in and out of this thing a few times, I figured why not buy one. And I bought one from Todd at Hunter Works, which this thing works really slick. Put your bell on, put your washer on, speed handle. You don't have to crank it down. All we're wanting to do is hold the spring tension down when we remove the 3 8 bolts. Notice that they're not really cranked on there. I mean, I believe it's 7 8 pounds. And just don't get on it and hammer on the thing. Just a little bump, little bump. Pull them out. See how it released that? Everything's good. Screws out. Now, you should probably should mark this, but I've already inspected mine. It has an X on the top 
It has an X on the spider and it's marked from the factory with blue permanent marker. So everything stays in line because these are balanced together. So now we're just going to slowly remove the spring pressure. And there you go. So we'll take this off, inspect this bushing in here. We're going to clean it, some more brake clean. Blower out. That's clean, that piece is done. You have your spring here. This is the factory Polaris primary spring. Pull it out. I'm even going to wipe it off. Just if anybody wonders, it's a black spring with a red line on it. Okay, you hit, this is your blue washer. This is what I'm going to be replacing with the white washer from Hunterworks. These XP1000s are notorious for over travel on their belt. You can watch the videos of, um, that Todd has on Hunterworks on YouTube. You can hash it out with whoever. It's just like saying if you want a white washer, a blue washer, two blue washers. It's whatever you want. I personally am going with a white washer. It is twice as thick as the blue washer and it's made out of stronger material. So I'm going that route to get rid of those over travel issues. That will be in my other video. Right now, pretty much just make it. Okay, you really want to get down inside here, clean this off, and clean off this roller here, and get those nice and clean with your brake clean. Honestly, in here is dirty. What you can do is you'll slide it this way. You'll get some more of that dirt and grime. Get in there and clean that out. You can't get all the way down in here and get this thing any cleaner without removing this spider here. And that takes a special nut to remove this locking nut. And then it takes a spider nut that goes over the top of the whole assembly. And you have to have a way to clamp it also. So really there's three different tools you need to break this down any farther. Make sure my bearing rolls freely in the middle here. Which it does. This is not a one-way bearing. The XP1000 does not have a one-way bearing. Same thing. We're going to clean up these sheaves. And 
And you don't really want to spray the brake clean on these sheaves right in here because of that bearing. You don't want to dry out that bearing. So that's why I sprayed it on the pad. Thing wiped down nice. I'll just put a little air to it. clean towel to get any last residue. There is one other thing you can do without those three tools that I mentioned earlier. You can take these screws out, it's an Allen head and a nut, and you'll be able to take out your weight. Inspect your weights and see if they have any flat spots on them. Everything looks good. Make sure your rollers up here are rolling and don't have any flat spots. Weights look really good. Rollers are all rolling. All three rollers are rolling. I'll take a little brake clean and hit those weights. But what I was getting at is you could with the, that Allen bolt and the nuts on the back of there, you can take those bolts out and pull your weights out and clean them up and even spray a little uh, Teflon on the inside, dry Teflon that is, on the inside of the weight. But other than that, I'm not going any farther because this is just a maintenance to get everything back together. So, blue washer is going back in. Blue washer back in. Spring back in. Remember, your X, X here, X here. Line your X's up. Bell. Washer. Now see, when I told you earlier that you really didn't need this tool, you can push this all the way down. See, look, right there. I can install everything right now. But I just want to make sure that this outer plate is inside of this collar. Seven to eight foot pounds. Start all these by hand. Do not run these in with the impact without starting them by hand first. This is how I'm gonna do it. I don't recommend doing it with impact, but this is how I do it. Seven to eight foot pounds. Okay. 
Okay, all of them are run down. I'm going to give it a little quick snap on every one of them. There you go. There's my seven to eight foot pounds. So, done with the spring compressor. Primary back together. Okay guys, I've already taken the time and used my brake clean, sprayed all this out, cleaned it out really good. Like I said, there wasn't much dust. Um, if you're lucky like me, this just happened to be sitting where I have the grease circ right here. I'm going to put a couple pumps in there and see what she'll take. Boy, that's about it. Two and a half pumps. So what you're, so you're going to want to do is put it in reverse or drive, whatever, and get this to your transmission to where it will lock up. And then you're going to put your secondary on. And this is where you have to slide this on to the shaft. There it is. I felt it dropped right in there. There it is. It's on. Good to go. Okay. Remember, this is just demonstration purposes because I'm going to have this all back apart because I'm going to do another video on, re on replacing these pups. Put your bolt in. bolt gets tightened to 55 foot-pounds. Take your belt. Make sure you have it going the right direction. Polaris. It's going. You put it on to where you can read it. This way I cannot read it. This is the way I took the belt off. Belts are directional. They are only directional when you put them on. If you put the belt on from the, the factory being brand new backwards, when you take it off, you put it on backwards. This one was on proper to where I could read Polaris, so we're going to put it on that way. Okay, now we need to spread the sheaths. Get your tool out of your tool kit. Okay, grab your primary, hook your primary, there you go, okay, get your primary bolt, make sure you have your washer and your collared washer. Remember, 96 foot pounds, 55 foot pounds. Okay, all these are on. What you would do is you would spin this to make the belt. I gotta put it in neutral, neutral. Okay, so walk your belt back up. Tighten all this down. Um, let's just say for all intents and pur purposes, I have this tight. I have my primary tight. We're going to put the cover back on.
Okay, I got all my cover bolts in. Okay, say we have all those on. I'm not going to put them all in and take them right back out, but I'm just showing you how to finish this up. Put your tube back on with your band clamp. Install your shock. Don't forget to have your spacers and O-rings in the right place. So basically you're going to have a spacer and an O-ring that goes on this side, spacer and an O-ring on the other side. And you would put it to your trailing arm, through your trailing arm, and tighten that back up, and theoretically everything would be done. So that's how you do maintenance cleaning on your 2017 XP 1000 Polaris non-turbo. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned if you're interested for the other video of the taking the secondary rollers out which would be the square pucks and replacing them with round rollers and we're going to do on the primary we're going to do the standard white washer on the primary thanks for watching if you like this content please subscribe and make sure you leave comments below uh, every bit you know of what we do here we do for you guys so you can learn how to do this stuff by my mistakes so thank you from Dirt Poor TV. Have a good one.